I am James Hamilton from Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal, and today I'm going to show you my three favorite ways to accurately set up my router table. Setting up a cut on a router table is a two-step process. You have to set the height of the bit and the position of the fence. In most cases, I just sneak up on the correct position through a series of test cuts. But if you want a way to accurately nail the precise setting without the fuss, there are three ways I like to do it. The first method is the simplest because I have everything I need in my apron pocket. I set my mini adjustable square to the measurement I require on the scale. And then I place the end of the rule on the router table. As I raise the router bit, I keep an eye on the end of that rule. When the bit reaches the body of the square, it will lift it up. Then I'll see a little sliver of light beneath the end of the rule, usually on one of the corners. So I back off the bit until the rule is again firmly seated on the top of the table and the bit's set. A similar process is used to set the fence. I place the end of the rule on the fence and I adjust it back until I can turn the router bit and feel the cutter just lightly scrape on the body of the square. The adjustable square method depends on the accuracy of your square and your eyesight so you can set it to the proper mark on the scale. But even if your eyesight is failing you, this is a reliable method for transferring measurements, such as the depth of a mortise or a tenon from the workpiece to the router table. My second favorite method for accurately setting up a router table involves these little metal blocks. Several companies make them. I'll link to some in the notes below this video. These are a must-have accessory for all sorts of tool and machine setups, not just the router. They're precisely machined to exact thicknesses, and by combining them, you can achieve any setting you like. I lay them next to the bit, and I use my finger to feel when the cutter is even with the top of the stack. Your finger can sense a difference as small as a couple thousandths of an inch, so this is really an accurate way to do it. To set the fence, I place a rule against the stack, and I rotate the bit to feel for that light scraping of the cutter on the rule, just as before. These blocks are also essential for setting up a plunge router, but that's a subject for another video. My third favorite method for accurately setting up a router table is to use a digital gauge like this one. These are pretty self-explanatory. You can use them to set the height of the bit or to set the fence depth. But where a tool like this really pays off is when you set up profiled bits. It can be difficult to set the height of a profiled bit using a method like the setup box because the bearing sets back from the edge. But a digital gauge can be placed right on top of the bearing. Now, why would you use a gauge to set a profile bit? Well, you probably wouldn't in most cases. You'd set it by eye because it doesn't matter a great deal as long as the full profile is on the edge of the workpiece. But what if you want to achieve that exact same profile again? A small change in the bit height can create a significant difference in the profile, especially if you try to join two pieces of trim at a corner. So when I cut a profile for a project, before I remove the bit, I take a quick measurement and I write it down. Then, if I need to duplicate that profile later in the project because I don't have enough of the stock made up ahead of time or I made a cutting mistake, I can reset the bit precisely with that digital gauge. I'll put a link to this gauge in the notes below. Just click on Show More if you're on YouTube. So there you have my three favorite methods for accurately setting up a router table. Each method has its place. The first one is for when I'm in a hurry or I want to transfer measurements from a workpiece to the router table. The second is the most versatile throughout the shop, not just at the router table. And the third really pays off with those profile bits. I recommend you try all three for yourself. For more great tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker, be sure to check out Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal over at StumpyNubs.com. Happy setups!